Even if you haven't committed any laws, dealing with law enforcement is generally not something you really want to do. Nevertheless, it will inevitably happen to you. We'll cover both techniques you can use to get yourself out of trouble and techniques cops use to boost their chances of putting something on you in this video. But before that, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for more amazing content. Now, let's get started. Requests are not orders. Contrary to popular misconception, a police officer's request to you is not the same as an order. For instance, unless specifically instructed to do so, you are not required to fully roll down your window. Police officers can be recorded while they are on duty, which may help to stop any legal antics because they will be aware that you have proof in your possession. In addition, unless the officer has a warrant, you are not required to consent to a search. You also have every right to inquire as to whether you are being held or are free to leave. Cops casually fish for info. You were just pulled over then, when the officer requested your license and registration. You gave them to him. So that your guard isn't up, you should think that everything that happens after this is them looking for information while pretending to be having a normal chat. Anything you say at this time could implicate you and be used as evidence against you in court. Even though it looks like a simple talk, you should only provide the officers with the information they need in the shortest amount of time. This does not imply that you should be impolite. Rather, you should just respond to any queries they may have on the actual traffic stop. You are not required to provide information on anything else. Try nicely asking what the result of your alleged transgression will be if they appear to be trying to transition the conversation to something else. Cops can legally lie to you. Imagine that an officer informed you that they had your fingerprints or DNA and that you shouldn't necessarily believe them to indicate or establish that you are accountable for the alleged crime. Cops are legally permitted to tell you the truth. It is actually improbable that police have any fingerprints or DNA from the scene if you've been caught for a crime that was committed relatively recently due to the notorious backlog in rural crime labs. The 6th Federal District Court recognized the practice of police lying about having DNA evidence at the time of your interview as a regrettable but common law enforcement technique that was not illegal. According to People v. Jones, police lies are acceptable as long as they don't increase the likelihood of false confessions. Cops can administer fake tests. In the 2009 case People v. Mays, Police hooked up their suspect to a fake lie detector that they, of course, told the suspect was real. They then asked their questions and later showed the suspect a fake graph from their fake machine that they claimed proved the suspect had lied when answering their questions. The suspect then admitted to being at the scene of the crime and was found not guilty. Police can lie to you legally, but they can also use fake tests to try to fool you. They informed the suspect that it had changed color because they had just used those hands to fire a rifle when they noticed it. Police confiscate stuff to fund themselves. The procedure of civil forfeiture allows the authorities to seize assets they suspect of being used in criminal activities, including cash, vehicles, and even residences. Contrary to criminal forfeiture, the owner of the property might lose it permanently without ever being found guilty of a crime or even being charged with one. The police can then simply keep the money as their own personal cash. Therefore, you must hire an attorney and show that the property wasn't truly used in criminal conduct. It is obvious how this system supports civil forfeiture given that everyone enjoys money in these types of situations. Prosecutors frequently claim that your case isn't sophisticated enough to warrant employing a counsel. You must be vigilant if you don't want your property to end up in the budget for the police department the following year, so be aware that it most definitely is. Ways to hide from cops Make careful to pay great attention so you don't miss anything because this cliff has what is perhaps the most significant and practical trick on the entire list. As you can see, if you merely keep a tiny piece of ductwork on hand at all times, you can quickly use it as a disguise if you ever find yourself in a foot chase with the police. Once you reveal yourself to the authorities, as long as you are in an urban or industrial region, you should disappear almost completely. 
Commentators on the video, who are likely skilled criminals, praise the novel strategy as stunning, sneaky, and brilliant. I want to remind you that most crooks aren't smart enough to pull this off effectively before you accuse me of assisting criminals. Complaints against police officers can be destroyed. Unfortunately, a culture of self-preservation has emerged inside the police department, even when doing so would compromise the public safety. In 2016, hackers broke into the major police union websites and found some quite unsettling facts. In certain regions, there are assurances in place to make sure that complaints made by members of the public against cops are kept confidential so that they won't harm the officer's reputation or career. In other instances, the complaints are merely completely destroyed. When The Guardian analyzed documents from the Fraternal Order of Police, they discovered that one-third of them had a clause permitting the deletion of files related to civil complaints, departmental inquiries, or disciplinary actions after a certain length of time. The public was prohibited from accessing previous records of complaints in one-third of the documents. All of these regulations aim to make it as difficult as possible for complaints made against police to actually have an effect. As a result, officers who receive complaints regularly may find themselves continuing on the force for an extended period of time. Stay calm and collected. Neil Franklin, a 33-year-old police enforcement veteran from the city of Baltimore, authored a piece about his experiences that was aimed at the general public. He said that everyone should be aware of how to uphold their constitutional rights and use good judgment while interacting with law enforcement. He emphasized that despite recent controversies, he believed that crucial information regarding dealing with police officers has remained largely unavailable to the general public. His best piece of advice was to simply maintain as much composure as you can when dealing with the police. A negative outcome of the scenario is far more likely when there is a nasty attitude present. In a similar vein, he said that it is never a good idea to touch a cop, not even in a playful or kind manner. However, if you are a bit of a bother and want to irritate a police officer who has just stopped you for driving while intoxicated, even if you haven't had any alcohol, why not keep an extra beer in your glove box and crack one open with your seatbelt like this? Okay, I wouldn't actually advise you to do that, but that seatbelt's resemblance to a bottle opener is odd. That's it, guys. There are several laws that the general public either doesn't know about or misunderstands. However, you can defend your rights and self in contact with law enforcement by arming yourself with knowledge. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. Leave a like, share with your friends and families, and jot down your thoughts in the comments section below.